Hey guys, this is Jay here from Gym Aware. Really hope you're enjoying Coach Tomato's podcast series so far. Here at Gym Aware, we've just released our brand new VVT product, Flex. Um, so I just want to give you a bit of insight into what it is and how it could help you as a coach or athlete. Flex uses brand new laser optic technology to measure barbell velocity, so like Gym Aware, it's highly accurate. The device connects straight to your iPhone or iPad. We've had an independent validation study to confirm that Flex is highly accurate. We have loads of awesome features already and our experienced development team continues to work on software updates each and every day. Key performance metrics are available including both peak and mean velocity, peak and mean power, distance, bar position and bar path. If you guys want any more information on flex, velocity based training, just be sure to reach out, go to our website, check us out on socials as well. But for now we hope you enjoy the rest of Coach DeMayo's podcast. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash C-V-A-S-P-S, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 73rd episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into the minds of the top practitioners of the world of sport performance to learn about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by Pace Lab Limited's high-performance throwing specialist and the director of sport at the Wellington School in Somerset, England, Stefan Jones. Stefan, man, great to see you, buddy. Thanks for being with us today. Our pleasure, man. It's always good to uh, listen to you talk, and I've listened to your podcast, and it's an honor to be on there, really. So, yeah, we're good. Yeah, cheers, bud. I'm stoked to catch up. I'm glad you're doing great, especially with how insane the world is right now. But, you know, before we get going too far, my man, who is Stefan Jones? Well, Stefan Jones is a grumpy Welshman. No, really. Uh, I was, uh, I played 20 years uh, professional cricket and rugby so I'm the last person to play two professional sports um, I retired uh, from rugby very young uh, I was an international rugby junior and then I went on to cricket I retired from professional cricket uh, 2011 to take up a post um, uh, at school as head of cricket and now director of sport and then and just to build my um, knowledge base on all things throwing especially fast bowling I wanted to come outside the constraints of organization work it out for myself uh, I've grown a lot as a coach I've got so much knowledge because I'm able to experiment at school and now I travel the world um, coaching uh, fast bowlers uh, work with the Radstan Royals in the IPL, which is the biggest league really in the world, um, with the best best cricketers, and consult with individual fast bowlers at international level, at state levels, county, schools. And uh, recently, I have a few more interests from um, other sports, actually. So uh, sprinting, uh, throwing, pitching, and javelin. So anything to do with speed, uh, my methods resonate well with them. So it's, um, and I started Pace Lab four years ago, and Pace Lab Global, the new site, went live, loosely live about two weeks ago. But over the festive period, I wanted family time. So, but I will push it now. So, lots of different programs. So, busy time ahead. Busy's good, though, brother. Busy's always oh, absolutely. good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially for chaps like us, it keeps us out of trouble, you know? Yeah, definitely, yeah. But no, buddy, I love it. You know, but as a guy who, you know, played two uh, pro sports and has really 
you know, like when we talk about things, we talk about like different aspects of training because, you know, does it transfer is really the question that we always come down to. And, yeah. and being someone who goes against the grain, there, there, there has to be a time or a place where this happens. So I'm fired up to hear about this. So if you wouldn't mind, describe a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. Yeah, good question. So when I played, uh, and I'm sort of turned into a poacher turned gatekeeper, really, in that. So when I played, um, when I played rugby, uh, I never trained weights. I didn't believe in it, mainly because my coaches back then would say, you can't get too bulky. Uh, don't do weights because you want to bowl. So that was my cricket coach. And then my rugby coach would go, actually, you quite quite small for rugby but I used to sprint a lot I used to jump a lot and I, and I was a I was a proper rugby player to be honest I could do things on the field that nobody else could a very fast twitch run 10 900 meters when I was younger and I and I trained I trained my nuts off I loved training uh, I wanted to be faster than anyone else so that got me success, a schoolboy international, one of the best rugby players in the country. Um, and then I went into professional rugby and they said, well, actually you're a bit small, so uh, you need some size. So I hit the gym. And then I hit the gym early on and I bowled as well. So in Wales or in UK, you play rugby one season, you play cricket another season. So it worked, but now you can't do it because they all blend together now. Um, but so I, I did weights. And then when I bowled in the winter as pre-season, I bowled quicker and I thought, oh, hang on, there might be something in this. Um, so I kept going and then, you know, did more weights, got faster, did more weights. And then I got to a stage where I actually plateaued and it hindered my performance for bowling. I became quite labored in the field. I turned like the Titanic in the field, you know, it was like, I was just so slow and muscle dominant. And then, and then I thought, right, this is not right. So then I went down the route of special, specific strength. And through this time, I went to Loughborough University, so I got sports science. I went to Cambridge University, a qualified physical education teacher. So I had the knowledge base. I kept reading uh, because I wanted to be in control of my own destiny. I wanted to become my own trainer. There's no disrespect to any other coach I had. But I, if I was to fail and couldn't pay the mortgage, then I wanted it to be on me. So I, and then I would listen to other coaches, obviously, and then I would question, have the capacity to question the status quo, really. And that's what I continued to do as a coach. So I went down the best strength. I bowled a really heavy ball that was specific. And then that fall, in, within two years, I put on eight, nine, ten miles per hour. And this is fact, you know, it's, it's on TV and it, it, it is facts. And then uh, I, I, it's, that's not to say everyone will do that because obviously I didn't reach my peer ceiling as such because it was all strength. So I had a bit more room to go to transfer really in simple terms. But then I hit a wall with that as well. I didn't improve because at the end of the day, how heavy can you go with that cricket ball? You can't throw a, a 900 gram ball, a 900 kilogram ball. It's like it doesn't work. So then I went down the route of isometrics. I hooked up with Christian Thibodeau, who I think is the best out there. Outstanding knowledge and his techniques are like top draw. Uh, and then I kept going up and up and I reached my ceiling then. So... But what I'm saying is I was very much uh, a strength power. You know, my lifts were ridiculous for, a, for, for a, a cricketer. You know, I remember in fitness tests, I used to warm up with an exercise that those the other guys max. So I used to have to wait around in the gym for 20, 30 minutes after everyone had moved on to the next exercise because I was still going. I was, you know, someone would max out on 100 kilogram bench press, and that was my warm up week. And that was as a, as a player. Um, but then it, towards the end of my career, I thought, oh, actually, this is not helping me now. I'm not bowling any quicker. So, I, but I went into my coaching uh, career with that mindset. Hard work pays off. The harder you work, the stronger you get 
the bigger that capacity, the faster you'll bowl, the better you'll be. Squat until you drop. Look at my numbers, two times body weight. And, and that's how I went about it. And then uh, four years ago, this young kid came to school uh, and he genuinely weighed, I'm sure you'll be listening to this now, I won't say his name, but he weighed about 54 kilograms um, and he couldn't squat his body weight uh, and he couldn't bench press. I had to have the bar alone. Um, and I thought, and he bowled and it was 80 miles per hour, which is, which is good pace for a 17 year old kid. And I thought, what am I doing here? I'm going down the wrong rabbit hole here. This, it's not about strength. It really isn't about strength. So, and then the more I, I, I tra coached with him, it was, and then I went down this route of, I came up with the hip and knee dominant classification with the tendon driven and the muscle driven bowlers and that individuality that's required for coaching anyone really. You know, you can, you can go Ben Johnson or Carlos. You know, that, that's, that's your training. They, would, they didn't do calories, apparently they didn't lift weights until the end of his career. And Ben Johnson couldn't do lots of plyometrics, but they both rapid, obviously. And that is the same with all sports and especially fast bowling. Uh, and, that, and I'll always be, you know, he had a scholarship at school, but I'll always be thankful for that meeting and working with him for, uh, for the last three or four years because uh, it has it has shaped me it has given uh, my coaching more uh, more purpose because at the end of the day now it is about transferring it is about transferring what we have in the gym to on the field and we've had this chat before you know it's it's, it's the gym whiteboard syndrome and putting numbers on the board so we can all pump our chest and ego driven that's just for us as coaches, you know, the, the, the players don't benefit from that at all. You've got to do your skill. You've either got to, use, to do your skill overloaded, underloaded, or in parts, which is what the skill stability is about. So hopefully I answered that first question. I do tend to go off on one, to be honest. No, bro, 100%. I think that, again, what it comes down to is something that a lot of coaches run into, right? And that is the, there's that moment where, something sparks you to run down the rabbit hole of special and specific strength. And, yeah. you know, it got, I was joking with another coach just yesterday about it where it's like, we all love the numbers and we all love, you know, big squats and big benches and all that. But if, if the best squatter was the best basketball player on our team, I'd be the best basketball player on our team. And I can guarantee you at five, nine, 195 pounds, 41 years old. I am not quite the number one player on our team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's close. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that is the thing. It's like, but then, but, but then, so my, my Instagram profile, it, 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 it's, it is part, it's a reflection of my coaching, but it's not the total story. I do trap bar deadlift. It's a great exercise. I do squat. I bench. I pull. Basic. But I don't mark it. It's not mark it yourself. But, you know, I don't tell everyone to do that because that, for me, is a given. That is athletic development. You, you need that. But only to, only to a point. You know, if you can squat one, one, one and a half times your body weight, you know, I'm happy, man. You know, strength doesn't have enough time to impact on a skill. But that's not to say that I don't do it. I did a, I did hand snatch this morning, but that's me. Uh, I, I like it. I like the intent. I like it wakes me up because I'm neurotype type one. So it just wakes me up. If I was to do foam roll for 20 minutes, like most youngsters do these days, I might as well get a pillow because I'll fall asleep. But I need to go in there and throw med balls and lift stuff before I do my main lift. But everyone is different and that's what i'm saying is like let's not ram it down the throat of of every athlete you've got to squat and this two, two times body weight for depth jumps my my you know my kid my child is 11 years of age she was doing depth jumps when she was six you should see her move now man she she can't she can't back squat her body weight that's for sure well it's just there's something to it right it's just 
figuring out what goes with what and, and moving that way, you know? But yeah. I think that in order to do that, there have been times in your life where you've had to ask questions and dig and, and, you know, obviously when you sat there and you were like, wait a minute, things aren't moving the right direction that that started that. But yeah, as such an inquisitive dude, I'm fired up to hear this one because this is a fun question for me being someone that likes to dig. If you could ask one question and you know, you would get the answer to it. What would that be? And why? Well, we go, go back to, to my uh, initial point the conversation is does getting stronger in the weight room help you bowl faster or sprint faster and that is that for me is the ultimate question and i know the answer and the answer is well there's two parts to it first one is no but second one depends it, it, it does depend where you are on that continuum whether you're spring or static so that is that is the ultimate question is what I'm about to tell my fast bowler to do in terms of I want you to squat now, uh, ramp the weight up in threes uh, and get to your max three and we'll do a, maybe a little complex there. Is that there going to help that person bowl that delivery on the field faster and then by doing that, become a better, more skilled bowler because there's lots of contextual stuff, uh, tactical element of it. No, it won't. And, and I, think, I think a lot of coaches need, the first question should always be, what I'm about to do with my athlete, is that going to help them become a better athlete? That is the number one question of all coaches, I think. Yeah. Like, is that going to help them be better at their sport? And I think that we we get excited about some other things that may or may not translate because I think we also get caught up in correlation indicating causation. And I don't know if that's yeah. always true. But it's, and I think as well, despite some of my um, fancy exercises, that simple works, you know, and and I and you know I'm a big Bondichuk uh, follower, you know, and Derek Ivley, and I always it might look different in in my programming, but it's always general strength, uh, specific uh, de preparation, specific development, competitive exercise. That tier is always in my week, whether it's split morning, afternoon, or different days or in a whole session, depends where you are. Because ultimately, I need that skill to be in that session to encourage a positive transfer of training. There's no point me doing a block of improving squat and then in, far, in four months time, bowl. It's like, well, why have we not done our skill all the time? My, my purpose is improving the skill itself. And I think that is uh, such an important uh, question. And because SNC in my sport anyway is very young, what happens? We tend to copy you guys, you know, the the American football or the rugby or the these guys and and powerlifting and, and strongman training and weight. It, it's an Olympic lifting. That is a different beast. That that's a different skill. My sport is about coordination. It's about intra and intermuscular coordination. It's about attractors. It's about fluctuators. That's what it, that's about fascia, it's about movement, it's not about muscle, because our ground contact time in fast bowling is very much like sprinting, you know, you're under 0.15 seconds, every stride, uh, and that does not involve the stretch shortening cycle, that involves tendons and fascia, any osculatory movement we do is tendon, fascia, when it becomes like pistons, then then you do your stretch, shortening cycle, explosive jumps, some ballistic stuff. But, you know, you need... And the only thing, only how you can train, only way you can train that is the skill itself. Nothing else in the gym will replicate it. It can replicate parts of it, but in terms of speed, it can never replicate it. So I've got a skill stability paradigm that, that I came up with. I remember doing it five years ago 
um, was based on isometrics and N Alex Natera, who's awesome, has got a run specific one. So mine is very similar to it, in you, but I think it's slightly different in that I go to uh, yielding isometric first to create the field and time under tension. And then I go to overcoming, and then we go to uh, dynamic, reactive, shock component of it. So with the skill stability, you know, you identify parts of the action, you isolate it, you constrain it, you overload it, you repeat it. So it's very much a systems approach, but it's combination of technique and strength overload. You combine them together very much um, Dr. Yesis and Volker Chansky's work, you know, and ultimately my, my focus is my skill itself. So identify, isolate and train that skill. But then that, that is like the top of the tier. The base is trap bar deadlift, bench, all that, row, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, with diff with clusters, potentiating clusters, triphasia, I can't get all that. But skill, man. Skill wins. Yeah, man. I, 100%. I couldn't agree anymore with everything that you've been saying. I think that that's something that we get confused about at times and people have a hard time with, but that's... I think that what's unique with the bowlers and when it comes to sprinting versus some other team sports is most of what you're dealing with is quantifiable and sometimes it's hard with other games, but that's another talk for another day, man. Cause that's yeah, just but, like trippy. Yeah. That, that, that's the thing though. I, and I, and I, and I get it, you know, I, I, my focus is on a bowler, fast bowler, which is a, a combination of javelin throwing and, and pitching really. So, and that is quantifiable. My speed gun, anyone sees me coach, you know, the strength bit and the med ball bit, it's, I take it or leave it, you know. I might test it or I might not test it. You know, I have a plan, but I never go into gym with a written plan or on an app or whatever. I know where I'm going, but I'll go in the gym and I'll look around and I'll go with feel, you know. What am I feeling? What do these athletes look like? So if you look at my program, which I planned, and what I'm doing, they're like, hang on, they're different. But the aim is always the same, to bowl that ball faster. That is it. And that's why I'll always have a speed gun there. And if that ball velocity is not increasing, then something's wrong. There's something's wrong in my program that I need to change. But I'm spoiled. They've got to run in a straight line and bowl the ball. They haven't got to, to, to sidestep or to tackle or to avoid. They've got a batter down there. We might smack them out of the park and you look a bit of a muppet. But at the end of the day, you've got a ball, you're going to try and bowl as fast as you can because the reaction, the reaction time, it impacts the reaction time of the batsman. So if you bowl the same delivery, uh, but a bit quicker, it's a better delivery. It's as simple as that. No doubt, man. But as a dude who's, you know, doing a lot to try to find better ways and, and in, not just in, improve what you're doing for yourself, but consistently sharing it and driving the field forward to, you know, get people to think and talk about these ideas or transfer more. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fired up to hear this because I think this is something that, you know, we try to do and, and I struggle with myself at times, so, you know. So what's Stefan's escape, bro? I'm a big, I'm a big family man, you know, family, family first for me, always family. Uh, it's, it's guided my decisions in life as well. We were just talking now before we went live on whether, whether I try and go into international or, or that sort of uh, level. And I'm, but it will always be guided by my family and spending time with my family, watching movies, uh, that, that's a big escape for me, but I, I, I find it hard to to switch off. If I'm honest, I like I like to read, but and that's the thing is that it might still be my job, you know, uh, coaching, uh, strength, or general, whatever specifics, or whatever we want to call it. That's my job. It's actually my passion and my hobby as well. So for me to relax and escape, 
it'll be lying on the sofa downstairs with my family in the house, watching a movie in the background, reading Transfer a Training Book. <laughs> that is escape for me. I love it, brother. I love it. Because sometimes, you know, when you get to do what you do and you love what you do, that is your escape. So that's rad, homie. I appreciate that. Yeah. But listen, brother, as always, great to catch up, Stefan. Truly appreciate right, your brother. time. Great to see you. Glad you're doing well, man. And, and truly appreciate everything you're doing. Pleasure. Stay safe over there, man. Yeah, man. Cheers. We'll be in touch real soon, brother. Thanks. Yeah, cheers, man.